gracious first Sunday in East in Lent. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen indeed. I invite you to stand as you are able. Our prayer of confession is found in our bulletin. Mighty one of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, do not be silent, but speak that we may hear. Speak justice that we may correct our lawlessness. Speak righteousness that we may know your ways. Speak compassion that we may know your mercy. Speak abundance that we may serve others. Speak understanding that we may be peacemakers. Speak glory that we may know your Son. Speak and we will listen to you. Your promised forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace when we speak our shortcomings. We speak of mistakes we have made. We speak of abandoning your ways. We speak of failures to show your compassion and mercy. We speak of our need for forgiveness. Mighty one of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, hear our prayer and lead us into the fulfillment of life. And all God's children say, Amen. God will not keep silent, but will gather us in the, these tender words. You are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and God's children speak. Glory to God. Let us pray. God of the covenant, you are ever faithful. Your love never ends. Teach us your ways and guide us in your paths of love and growth and forgiveness that we may witness to your grace and salvation. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. You may be seated. Our first reading comes to us out of the Old Testament book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, I am now setting up my covenant with you, with your descendants, and with every living being with you, with the birds, with the large animals, and with all the animals of the earth, leaving the ark with you. I will set up my covenant with you so that never again will all life be cut off by floodwaters. There will never again be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the symbol of the covenant that I am drawing up between me and you and every living thing with you on behalf of every generation to come. I have placed my bow in the clouds. It will be the symbol of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will remember the covenant between me and you and every living being among all the creation. Floodwaters will never again destroy all creatures. The bow will be in the clouds and upon seeing it, I will remember the endearing covenant between God and every living being of all the earth's creatures. God said to Noah, this is the symbol of the covenant that I have set up between me and all creatures on earth. Word of God, word of life. And I speak to God. And it couldn't be more appropriate that Molly has decided to join us this morning. So Keith, we thank you for bringing her with you this morning. Molly is Keith's dog, in case you don't know. I had asked that those of you who had been bringing your dogs to parking lot worship, 
that they could still attend here in our worship space. They will be welcomed. So continue to remember that for Rosie and for Mabel and for any of your other talks that would like to come and be a part of who we are. They, to me, belong here just as much as our littlest belong here also. They make no muss, they make no fuss, neither shall we. If you are able, please stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Lord. About that time, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and John baptized him in the Jordan River. While he was coming up out of the water, Jesus saw heaven splitting open, and the Spirit, like a dove, coming down on him. And there was a voice from heaven. You are my son, whom I dearly love, and in you I find happiness. At once, the Spirit forced Jesus out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among the wild animals, and the angels took care of him. After John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, announcing God's good news, saying, Now is the time. Here comes God's kingdom. Change your hearts and lives and trust this good news, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. This morning, as we read Jesus' baptismal account, we see something very different than what we saw last week. Last week, when the divine spoke out of the clouds, Peter, Paul, and James could hear the divine's voice. This morning, as Jesus rises up out of the waters, and the heavens split open, Jesus is the only one who hears these words. You are my son, my beloved. With you, I find great happiness. In other translations, it would be, I find, uh, you are my son, my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. It's just a matter of what version of the Bible you're reading. It's an important account. When Peter, James, and John heard the divine's voice on the mountaintop, they were giving, given their orders to begin their ministry, even going down the mountaintop. When Jesus came up, out of that water and he alone heard the voice of his father he too was given his call to go and do and be be the person incarnate that God had sent him on earth to become we know We know that when Jesus came up out of the wilderness after his 40 days, his work began immediately. But during those 40 days, our Lord suffered with no food, with no drink, and with the constant sound of Satan ringing in our Lord's ears. That was a constant. We read in today's lesson that Jesus was with the wild beasts. Jesus was not confronted by the wild beasts. Jesus was not threatened by the 
wild beasts. When we see the word with, used in the Bible, with means loved. Jesus was loved by the wild beasts who probably protected Jesus from whatever else might have been out there, such as the serpent snake of Satan. And we know that Jesus was also not alone. He was being served by angels. These angels were not instantly making him bread. These angels weren't giving him water. These angels, I would like to say, were Jesus' cheerleaders, giving him the strength to keep moving forward, giving him the spiritual energy to refuse Satan and his constant yammering. I think it no coincidence that there were three beings with Jesus in that time and space, Satan, the wild beasts, and the angels. We know the importance of three. We know it in the Trinity. We know it in our sacraments of body, blood, and water. We, on Wednesday, began our 40-day journey in Lent. Those of you who were here received ashes. Those of you who were here received your bracelet if you had lost yours. And those of you who were here received these pocket crosses made by Kathy. There is a very small wooden cross in many of the quilt squares. And in the rest of the quilt squares, there's a cloth cross inside your quilt square, inside your quilt square. Keep these in your pocket. And when, if you're like most people, you stick your hand in your pocket, you will remember you are beloved. You are a child of God. And you are not alone. The cross inside stands with you. It is a mistake that we have three elements this year at Easter. That was, I mean, Lent. That was truly by accident. This is new for us, and I appreciate it so very much, Miss Kathy. Thank you for making these for us. So if you were not here on Wednesday, I will be offering ashes if you would like them. On Wednesday, after the families or person had received their ashes, they also made an ash cross on our puzzles. Normally we have a canvas that we put our family crosses on and hang in the fellowship hall. I could not get my hand on a canvas this year, but I had these blank puzzles, and I find them fitting for our time in Lent. So if you receive your ashes today, it makes them no less important than when we receive them on Ash Wednesday. The meaning is still there. We were dust, we were ashes. And that's where we will return. That's a promise that was made by God when he placed his son on the cross 
for us. So on this Sunday morning, we hear not only the covenant that God made with us, oh, so many thousands of years ago, a covenant with the promise of a rainbow that unfortunately we see far too few times to remember that covenant. Because here in Niobrara, knowing that God made the promise of never to flood the earth again is important. So we, especially here, give thanks every time we see a rainbow. And we give thanks that God has made a covenant for everlasting from your great, 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 great grandparents to your great, 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 great grandchildren. That covenant will never be broken. That covenant with all creatures on earth, whether they walk, or they swim, or they slither, or they fly, God has made a covenant with them with Molly, with Rosie, with Bella, with Mabel, with my two darling dogs, that they will always, always be in a covenant with our Lord. During Lent, that covenant is important because we are promised so much as we make our journey to our cross. We are promised that there are better days ahead. We are promised that there will be forgiveness found at the foot of the cross. And those are things I don't think we should take lightly. That is why Lenten services, I think, are important. Not because I'm the pastor standing here and asking you to come, but because as a person who has sat in the pews during Lent and had a place to go to be reminded of promises, to be reminded that I am not walking this journey alone, that I have fellow brothers and sisters who are in this with me. And to me, that's what those Latin services are about. Community. I invite you all to those services that will look nothing like we've done before. <coughs> Depending on the attendance to these services, we may have to move worship to the Lutheran Church. If tendons on Wednesdays are low, we will remain here and only have to clean one building. So if you get an email or on Facebook and you see that we're moving over there, you know Wednesday service has gone well. But what's gone even better is that you are all here on this Sunday receiving a promise from our Lord. As this morning we celebrate communion with the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, a promise promised and a promise kept that we would be fed from the bread of life and we would be forgiven for the actions at the cross. Thanks be to God.
If you are able, I invite you to stand for the prayers of all God's children. Let us pray. Loving, creating God, you are in covenant with your people. You have pledged to be our God and ask us to be your people, trusting you in all our ways. But we find many excuses to prevent us from really trusting you. We erect barriers before our faith journey even begins. Our time, obligations, energy, all become part of the bricks and mortars which fashion this barrier. We can give lip service to the journey. We can daydream about what it would be like to truly place our hands in yours and follow you. But when it comes to actually making the journey, our time constraints and weak commitments loom largely before us. Help us to tear down this barrier. Make us ready for the journey by replacing the fear in our hearts with a sense of joy and challenge of self-discovery and discipleship. Remind us that in your service to you, helping others, we will also find ourselves made more fully whole. Make us ready to receive your good news and then to be witnesses to your love and to all your people. Lord God, you are the builder of all things. May our leaders, President Biden, Vice President Harris, our senators and our representatives work together harmoniously and not get sidetracked by partisan politics. Help our leaders and help us not to be divided, but to commit to working cooperatively for the common good. Give our leaders and us the humility and respect for one another. When our leaders have different opinions and agendas, help them find common ground and find ways to compromise. Help our leaders be mutually supportive to one and to another. Okay, um, I would love to if someone would put prayers for Texas and Louisiana in the prayers of Healy, please. For Texas and Louisiana, we would pray for them too. Sir. We all are to the names of our friends and family members and in other situations in the meeting and comfort of our need. Let us remember that we do understand the need in the prayer of our meeting. We lift up the names of loved ones in the prayer of our petition for God's healing love. Kathy, Karen, Ron, David, Aaron, Alberta, Vicki, Kenny, Galen, Erica, Cheryl, Alicia, Viola, Shirley, Mike, Jim, Kent, Janice, Marissa, Irene, Bill, Patty and Rick, Rick and Pam, Terry, Kristen, Carl and Joe, Russ and Linda, Donna and Chris, Trudy and Dan, Amanda and Peter, we utter in our hearts names and situations that would break our hearts to speak. God hears all our cries and responds in love. Go into 
into this world, confident in God's love and infinite power. We offer ourselves to be imperfect, but willing to serve, and we offer these our prayers in the mass community. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us speak a word of peace to one another. And all God's children say, Be peace. You may be seated. The offering plate is at the back table where you may drop off your offering this morning. <clears throat> we offer a prayer for our offering. Holy God, steadfast rock of all salvation, we marvel at the strength of your compassion and your ability to offer forgiveness. We come to you, honor to depart our hearts of the innocence, and we are living for, for you to depart our ground, and we are forgiven. Amen. You will notice this morning that communion words look very different, and you need to follow along with me, because you all have spoken pieces in it. This morning, beyond the great Thanksgiving. You want somebody to read your part? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We praise you and we give you thanks for your divine creation, filled with purposeful interdependence. Thank you for creating in us an innate desire to live in community with a need for the gifts of others. Thank you for the freedom to be who we truly are, imperfect in body and mind, dependent, fallible, always needing help, and always needed to help those around us. You whole and holy, live in the eternal community of triune love and call us limited and dependent as we are into community with you. You give and ask of us ever flowing mercy, not unblemished sacrifice. This is why the whole universe worships you. This is why we join with all heaven and earth to praise you in an endless chorus of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Holy heaven and the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy heaven and the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, who teaches us the way of mercy, not sacrifice. We bless you, O oh God, because in mercy, not sacrifice, Jesus taught his disciples not to depend on money or gifts they could offer, but on the hospitality and gifts of others. We give you thanks, O oh God, because in mercy, not sacrifice. Jesus taught his disciples not to depend on their own power to obtain approval, but to depend upon the power and mercy of others. We praise your name, O oh God, because in mercy, not sacrifice, Jesus taught his disciples not to seek respectability, but to connect with all people, including sinners and outcasts, often told they could not look to heaven for help. 
We glorify you, O oh God, because in mercy, not sacrifice, Jesus taught his disciples not to seek intellectual, political, or physical superiority, but to be the servant of all, of every ability, even washing their feet. For it was in the mercy, not sacrifice, that Jesus took bread. He broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, This is my brokenness shared with you. Eat it and remember me. In mercy, not sacrifice. He took a cup of wine from the hastily prepared table and gave thanks, and then gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood proclaiming the divine promise of forgiveness for the failings and those of the world. Drink it and Subjects of God's mercy in Christ, and no longer objects of sacrifice despite the world's labeling, give you ourselves, our differently abled souls and bodies, a fragrant offering of praise and thanksgiving as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ is died, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gathered here and these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. And all God's children say, Amen. Now, let us join one with another as we offer the words our heavenly Father has given us in the manner in which you learn them. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now to take and eat the wafer found in your communion. in your name, 
And all God's children say, Amen. We walk in paths of steadfast love and faithfulness. Dwell under the rainbow of God's love. Proclaim the good news of God, for God's realm is near. Before we depart this morning, I do invite you to come forward, um, socially distanced, of course, if you would like to receive the ashes, or if you would like to pick up your pocket cross or your bracelet, if you've lost it. We have 12 left. We, um, I couldn't get more in. Um, it's just what this whole time has been about, is sacrifice. Um, so we sacrifice that we only have 12 of these. Of the bracelets. Of the bracelets. You got plenty of We have plenty of the pocket crosses. We have the Presbyterian annual meeting following worship. So um, if you didn't get a packet, one will be handed to you. I ask the Presbyterians to stay seated unless somebody needs to get past you to get out of their pew. Um, uh, okay. Uh, you can see when our next council meeting and session meetings are, you can see who the ushers will be for the next three Sundays. If you cannot be on one of your Sundays, would you please um, ask one of the other uh, ushers in our little list of six ushers if they could switch places with you? Are there other announcements that need to be shared before this family? Seeing none, Miss Jane. Can you stay just a few minutes after worship? Miss Wanda, could you meet me and Miss Jane up here for a few minutes while the people are leaving? After anybody who wants ashes receives ashes, can you all do that? Thanks be to God. We ask that.